What makes John Jones the greatest of all time? Is it steroids? Is John Jones uh, tested positive for Terinabol? Illegal techniques? I do poke people in the eyes, and it's very illegal, uh, but I do it. Or something else? But we really do paint our world with our thoughts and, and our level of self-belief. To find out, we must go back in time. December 30th, 2016, UFC 207, Cody Garbrandt versus Dominic Cruz. Cody Garbrandt put on the greatest performance of his career against Cruz to win the bantamweight title. After the fight, he talked about how he was in flow state and instinctively knew what to do at every moment. I've experienced that flow state, but never on that highest stage or on that level yeah. of in depth with my body and, and you know and just seeing everything. I could see every punch. However, he never recreated that magic and lost his title shortly after. It's because he never learned how to enter the flow state on command. John Jones, however learned how to do it a long time ago. Also called being in the zone, during this flow state, we are operating on a subconscious level and fully immersed in what we're doing. For flow to occur, the challenge must be at the edge of our skill level. If it's too easy, we get bored. If it's too difficult, we get anxious. If it's making us stretch, flow has the possibility to occur. The reason I bring this up is because of why John Jones moved from the light heavyweight division to the heavyweight division. Uh, the fear was gone. I didn't really, I didn't really fear these guys. I just wanted more. I wanted, I wanted to be nervous again. I wanted, to, I wanted to have fear again. I think fear is healthy. Jones was in this zone down here and experiencing boredom. After dominating legends like Shogun, Machida, and DC, his later opponents did not present the same level of challenge skill-wise. So to bring himself back to flow, he decided to raise the challenge and move up to heavyweight to fight Stipe, Ganu, or Gon. Now, a more difficult challenge doesn't guarantee reaching the flow state. The challenge being at the edge of our skill level is only one part of the equation. However, John Jones knows the whole equation. After being presented with a challenge at the edge of our skill level, there are triggers we can use to ensure we enter the flow state. The first trigger Jones uses is anchoring. Anchoring is associating an internal feeling with an external trigger. John Jones has associated the feeling of flow with spinning in circles with his arms outstretched. He has done this his entire career. This is 10 years ago, this is five years ago, and this is his last fight. With enough practice through anchoring, you can train your mind to associate any desired feeling with a specific external trigger. John Jones uses this external trigger to enter flow on command. Next, John Jones channels his anxiety into excitement. Being nervous is important, you know, there's, there's a quote that I love. I see it all the time, you know, there's nothing wrong with having butterflies as long as you can get them to fly in formation. Physiologically, anxiety and excitement are the exact same. What makes us feel anxiety or excitement is solely based on how we feel about it. John Jones understands this and convinces himself during the walkout that he is feeling excitement because anxiety prevents flow from happening. When he's walking out in front of tens of thousands of screaming fans, there's a flood of emotions, adrenaline, and nerves. John Jones gets his butterflies in formation by telling himself positive affirmations at this moment to channel this energy into excitement and not anxiety. Let's go! And the last thing John Jones does to enter the flow state is stay as present as possible. And I'm just gonna be embracing the moment, you know, whether people are booing or cheering, I know that a lot of people are here to see me. And um, I'm just gonna live in my moment, live in my destiny, and just uh, try to just soak as much in and enjoy as much of it as I can. Being truly in the moment, focusing on the here and now, that is the only way to enter flow. If you're worried about what could happen or thinking about what has happened, it's impossible to be at your best right now. John stays in the moment by engaging his senses and constantly bringing himself back to center, even mid-fight. When he sits on his stool, he centers himself in the present moment. So what I try to do is I try to close my eyes and I focus on the water. I focus on, you know, I focus on the beauty and the fresh air. In between thinking about all these beautiful thoughts, I find myself recovered. This focus brings him back to the moment. It ensures that if he has slipped out of the flow state, he can get right back into it and fight at his best, most creative self. It has been found that flow increases creativity by 400 to 700 percent, which explains why John Jones does John Jones things. He is the present and he is the future, and he might be the greatest talent that we've ever seen in the UFC. And the last thing John Jones does to get into the flow state is pattern recognition. Jones is obsessed with studying other fighters' tendencies and weaknesses. I study everybody extensively, and then I come up with their patterns. 
Um, I figure out the way they flinch. I figure out their first favorite punch, their second favorite punch, their third, their favorite combinations, the, their setups to their takedowns, when they clinch, what side of their head's gonna be on. Literally everything. I, I know everything about every opponent. He studies them and visualizes fighting them hundreds, if not thousands of times. I became obsessed with um, the power of the mind. Meditation, visualization, and just realizing how powerful our minds actually are. During these visualizations, he programs how he will capitalize on their weaknesses over and over again. The brain cannot tell the difference of visualization from reality, so these neural pathways are strengthened with each repetition. So when the moment comes and the opportunity presents itself, pattern recognition kicks in and he capitalizes instantly. The most obvious example of this was his most recent fight with Gon. Gon has a tendency from southpaw to overthrow his left straight. Here you can see him overthrow it, and Ganu didn't capitalize. The next time he throws it, you can see him overthrow it again. This time, Nganu tries to throw a hook off the break. John Jones saw this and visualized what he would do a thousand times, which is slip to the outside, clinch, and use this opportunity to take Gon down. Which is why when the moment came in the fight, it was instinctive from John. The next weakness Jones saw in Gon is that when he's taken down, he often tries to wrestle up while leaving his neck exposed. You can see here Gon's neck is exposed, but Nganu is not confident in his submission game and doesn't go for the guillotine. John Jones saw this and undoubtedly visualized cranking a guillotine over and over and over. Which is why when Gon did exactly that, The prefrontal cortex of our brain is responsible for thinking and decision making. In flow, there's less activity in this area and we act from our subconscious without thinking. To us, the fight looked unbelievably easy for Jones, but it's because he programmed his subconscious with the instructions many times and in the flow state, it simply acted on the instructions instantaneously when the opportunities presented themselves. John Jones is undoubtedly a gifted athlete who works very hard, but his true genius, which is often overlooked, is his understanding of the mind. Hey, thank you for checking out the video. If you made it all the way to the end, please leave a bones emoji down below so I know who watches all the way through. And if you want to learn more about how elite fighters think, check out this video here.